This video presents historical context and theories based on the quotes from real public figures. The views expressed do not represent those of the video's producers or narrator. It is intended for informative purposes and not to offend. The glam of Hollywood is not just as smooth as it has been portrayed in the public. There are countless unsolved, dark, mysterious stories of the people in Hollywood that are, to this day, moot. From the days when artists were blackmailed by notorious gangs to the days Actual acts became so popular that it affected their sanity. There is very little known about this industry. Why? Because those who try to open up about the dark incidents that happen in Hollywood often see a tragic ending. To be a member of the Illuminati or a member of the elite society or whatever, you would think that I would be, that they would come at me. And I, I think they did. I've had my come at me on some, oh, you should do this type shit. And I was like, what? what? Man, what the f why the f would I do that? Coolio. Despite the danger that could come with exposing Hollywood, Coolio was one rapper that did not fear the consequences, going on to expose some shady rumors about this industry. Even though Coolio emerged in the same Los Angeles neighborhood in the late 1980s as the aggressive hip hop acts Dr. Dre, Easy E, Ice Cube, as well as the rest of the NWA crew, his subject matter and demeanor were rather light. His hit songs from the 90s were considered the soft beats in the rap industry. I have an original flow on my rhymes. I don't sound like anybody. I take my time, and you know, I like music. It was a formula that served Coolio well in the late 90s, as his first two albums sold millions of copies worldwide. But after five years in the spotlight, he fell out of favor as other hip-hop artists came into the mainstream, and for the next three decades, he was perhaps better known for his chirpy work in reality TV, game shows, and film. What's up, everybody? This is the one and only Coolio with the flow. AKA El Cool Magnifico. But then, many conspiracy theories started to boil when everybody saw a worldwide famous rapper just doing game shows. Nobody expected the ultra famous drop Gangster Paradise, which was a perfect example of a blend of a gangster's brutal life with a melodic, lighthearted side of rap to end up like that. I was pretty excited about it, to tell you the truth. When I let the record company hear it, their exact words were, oh, yeah. It's a good album cut. I swear to God they said that. They won't, they won't deny that right now. To start with, Coolio's life was rough from the very start. He used to live with his mother when he was five, when she broke up with her husband. That was until she started drinking, neglecting her son. Due to his mother's negligence, Coolio started running with the neighborhood gangs, even bringing weapons to school. You know, for a while, until I got to um, junior high school, and then I just started fighting back. You know, when I started fighting back and, and they, they stopped bullying me. During his time with gangs, he became addicted to drugs and closer to adulthood, he was also jailed. The reason was unclear as there are many theories behind this. Some sources say that he was wrongfully jailed due to an identity clash and some say that he had charges of theft. Whatever the reason, he was sent to jail for 10 months and this is how he felt about his addiction. I'm not going to say that, I was, that I'm glad I went through that. But I'm glad I had that God gave me the strength to overcome that. That's mm. what I have. However, this was the last time he was involved in such stuff. After this incident, he moved to California, and that's where his rap career started. Soon he got all the fame he deserved and dropped his mega hit song album. I think it's the spirituality of the song. Uh, the song gives you a feeling of maybe sadness for some people. While working with Hollywood's elites during that period of time, many things were revealed to him, and his recklessness helped him to tell the truth to the world. During one interview, he revealed everything. According to him, when he used to be famous in the industry, he was never approached directly. Instead, some people were sent to him for the message they wanted to give. They would come at me, and I, I think they did it sideways, though. I never, nobody never got at me directly and said, we want you to join us. This statement was directed toward the Illuminati. It was quite fishy for him that the elites never contacted him by themselves. Instead, they sent shady people who would force him to do inappropriate things to get even a single song done. Come at me on some weirdo shit, like on some gay shit. I've had my come at me on some, oh, you should do this. 
The acts they asked him to do were so inhumane that he became very shocked, knowing that this is what it takes to make a position in Hollywood. I, I, I view that as being um, inhuman. I view that as, I, I would never do that. And this was where he decided to reject them. He thought that rejecting them would be good for him and the industry too. But this decision proved to be even more bad for him. The elites of Hollywood supposedly tried their best to cancel him and did every wrong thing to him. It started happening to me. Went to jail. Was some bullshit. Mm. Got convicted. Well, not necessarily convicted, but because I, I didn't do no time, no real time. Allegedly, they did so much wrong to Coolio that he was sent to jail on a false charge. He was arrested at Los Angeles airport for the possession of substances. Coolio did not even know that there was a pipe and other substances in his bag. According to him, he never ever tried to put the substances in his luggage in his life. Oh, bro, I ain't never did that. I ain't never, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. When, when they, when they, the first thing I said, when they pulled that pipe out that bag, I said, that's not mine. When Coolio said this to the police, they responded that they would check, and they checked exactly the bag in which the things were put, as if they knew that this was the suspicious bag. Inside my bag, with all my wires, my Xbox, the, the bag that they're gonna open and search, those possessions were not clearly Coolio's because, according to him, he was not so stupid that he would keep the substances among his other normal things. Anyways, the police at the airport did not believe him. Coolio even requested a DNA test to prove that those substance bags were not his. And this is what they said. If it's mine, then my DNA will be on it, right? Yeah, you're right. But we don't do that. When Coolio saw that they were not listening to him, he decided to pay for the DNA test himself. Because all he wanted was to clear his name for the false accusation on the basis of which he was being examined at the airport. I said, okay, well then, let me pay to have it tested just so I can clear my name and my know that I am not that dumb. But this also did not work out for him, and consequently he was arrested for the possession of substance and gun possession. Coolio was supposed to pay for three years in jail probation. However, as part of the negotiated plea deal that kept him out of jail, he was also required to complete community service for a period of 45 days despite the fact that his reputation was torn. When something happens, whether it's true or it's not true, once it's been said, Mm -hmm. But most people, it's true. Later during the trials, it was proved that Coolio was not involved in the possession of any weapon possession. This is what he said during his interview. It was a misunderstanding. I do not condone the use of firearms, legal or illegal. Thanks to the court and the attorneys handling this for me so I can still do the work that I do. But for the substance possession case, he was sentenced to 10 months in jail with drug rehabilitation. And this was all done to him because he rejected the elites of Hollywood. This was just one incident that he revealed. And he wanted to tell more about this industry, but he was afraid that they would do harm to him. Coolio knew that they were ultra powerful. It's a lot of shit I know that I want to tell people. It's a lot of things that I want to teach, but I'm afraid. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm scared because I, I got four grandchildren. In the interview in which he was revealing the truth, he seemed to be so scared that they might harm his family. He decided to keep mum about the things he knows, out of fear. But there were certainly some inappropriate activities that were going on during those days, which were also used to manipulate artists. People are telling the truth. I've seen some crazy shit. I seen some crazy shit, bro. I seen some shit. Wow, I seen some shit that made me go, what the f now, as soon as he disclosed everything that happened to him during his time in Hollywood, he started to receive death threats. And ultimately, after some time, he was found dead. But before his death, this is what he said. And you sit there and argue them down about how it's not true. I'm cool on that. For real. Because, cause, you know... It is worth noticing here that right after this video was released, Coolio was found dead in a bathroom. Before his death, he came to his friend's home for a hangout and went to use the bathroom but never came out of it alive. And when his friends went to check on him, they found him dead on the floor. 
the medics determined that he had suffered a severe heart attack. Grammy award-winning US rapper Coolio has died in Los Angeles. The legendary entertainer, whose real name is artist Leon Ivey Jr., was 59 years old. Since then, a whole series of recent interviews with Coolio has surfaced, in which he claims that he is going to expose the music industry, that he saw things that would get him killed and that he was about to wake up black people and make them understand what their true origins are. I, I think you I think you are the most important black man in America, bro. Now we know that any time a celebrity dies, conspiracy theorists are going to say that it was the work of a secret government cabal or the Illuminati or the royal family. They're going to connect numbers and initials and dates and album cover imagery to reach conclusions that they claim to prove a celebrity was murdered. So naturally, people are now saying that Coolio was taken out because he knew too much and needed to be silenced. Look how absolutely certain some people are that this is the case. R.I.P. Coolio for standing for the truth and exposing the music industry for what it is. However, we all know he was murdered because of this reason. R.I.P. to the OG. Another one added, When I first heard of his passing, I told my wife he was exposing the truth and that's what happened to him. I saw his interview when he talked about how they came for him and his family. They got to him, bro. Especially if they say his d was d related, then we know they got to him. And one person also said, I don't believe in coincidence. He suddenly and mysteriously passes away after expressing his desire to make black people wake up and understand where they really came from. And after he talked about how he has supporters that are willing to stand up and help the movement. If you're famous with a voice and you start saying something they don't like, they take you out. So how likely is it that this is the case? Coolio was never really the sort of guy who would spearhead a movement to expose the music industry. But people don't doubt that he knew of some of the dodgy and secretive workings behind the scenes. Before his death, he went on a podcast where he suggested there are big time rappers who had got their record deals because they were shagging powerful music industry executives. To be a member of the Illuminati or a member of the elite society or whatever, you would think that I would be, that they would come at me and I, I think they did. It's sideways though. Tim Pool, the host of the podcast Timcast, did not waste a single minute after breaking the news of Coolio's passing before turning the conversation to recent deaths caused by heart disease. You're not allowed to ask any questions about that. This program was brought to you by Pfizer, he added, sarcastically referencing the pharmaceutical corporation. But another reason behind disclosing such confidential things was also that he had a personal grudge to bear as he felt he had been wronged in some way about the publishing rights to Gangsta's Paradise. I never worked for you too. I, I got, the, got, the, got the lion's share. Oh, man. I got all the, I got all the writers. Oh, okay, okay. All the writers and I, you know, I got, I got, a, I got a small portion of it, which is... After Coolio's death, some QAnon influencers and fringe form users were quick to suggest he was assassinated as part of a larger plot to keep him from exposing sex traffickers. Some sources said his death was mainly due to the COVID-19 vaccine, but when the autopsy was done, it was found that he overdosed. He sort of mentioned that with that free spirit comes using drugs. Choke no joke. Although Coolio was the first one to disclose every dark activity going on behind the glamour of Hollywood, there are some other artists too who shared their suspicious experiences in this field. One of them is Choke No Joke. Choke is a videographer who has worked with a lot of artists. With many of these artists, his experience was good. But with one artist, Jay-Z, he had quite an unpleasant work experience. It's f up out here. It's f up out here. And everybody out here that's friend, like they doing so motherfucking good is lying. Basically, Choke used to work with Def Jam Recordings. Jay-Z has remained the president of this label for quite some time. And during his tenure, artists were bound to sleep with the executives and perform some inappropriate stuff with them to get their work done. We hit this brick wall where we get executives that try to sleep with us for us to move forward in the industry, right? And this started a never-ending rope of funds between Choke and Jay-Z. There were many occasions where Choke described how Jay-Z is a secret hater who signs artists he either fears or wants to keep under his thumb in order to prevent competition. Jay-Z's a hater? Don't y'all know that he blocks people too? He used the example of Jay-Z's wife Beyonce, dropping music for Lion King at the same time as Nas's Lost Tape project. They could block any and everybody they want right now because they have the power because 
they the two at the top. He even made the conclusion that Jay was still not totally over his beef with Nas from the early part of the century. What Nas do? Turn around. We announced that he dropping the Lost Tapes too. And what they do? A few days later, a week later, they announced Beyonce dropping the Lion King soundtrack. Chope No Joke also delved further into the topic of Jay-Z's failure to give back to the communities and individuals who were instrumental in his rise to wealth and fame. So now what they trying to do is they trying to break, they trying to break America. Yeah, permanent is over. That's nothing. They just leave that Yo, bro. He went on to discuss the historic night that Jay Z brought Cameron out on stage. He believed that Jay Z did this in order to embarrass Damon Dash and to have the great New York rappers that he had battled with kiss the ring. He was selling that to Cameron, and that was they beat. And Jay performed, but Jay comes out at one of the award shows. I think it was a BET Awards. He spoke about this in his interview about Jazzo's signing with Rockefeller Records, as well as the reasons why he believed Jay-Z was taking advantage of other artists such as Meek Mill and others. I mean, Jazzo signs over to Rock Nation. Y'all see how they YouTube try to ruin my video? After all these events, Jay decided to leave Def Jam's presidency. At the time he was leaving the record labels, he said, Now it's time for me to take on new challenges. I am pleased to have had the opportunity to build upon the Def Jam legacy. After Choke, Smart Guy also shared a similar experience working in Hollywood. He disclosed that the artists were invited to the parties, and to win the deals with record labels, they made them do obscene activities. Not only did they make them do these actions, they also recorded them so that if in the future they tried to reject them, they could knock them out. To make it clear, this means that artists were possibly forced to sell their souls just for the sake of money and fame. They were allegedly forced to do unusual acts after being forcefully drugged. According to Smart Guy, they were made to work late at night just to check their stamina and get their deals done. Because they trying to drug you, so you be in a studio session late at night and they'll see if you, if, if you a meatball, yo bro, here hit this blunt. He went on to say that they recorded those absurd activities just to blackmail artists in the future. If the artist got famous and had the position, they would have the recording and they could use it to trap them in a contract. You, you get they blackmail you. I mean, it's a lot of, you know, the game has evolved. That was what they did back then. Now, it's a little different. You'd think it's only the smaller artists that were involved in such activities, but according to Smart Guy, he has also seen famous artists from the industry who went there just to get their contracts signed. Fat Joe Whenever it comes to the topic of exposing dark secret parties in Hollywood, Fat Joe has always been very outspoken. During one of his interviews, he claimed that this Hollywood industry is mostly now ruled by what he called the gay mafia. The hip-hop community is most likely owned by gay. To be honest but, with but you, you think they'll be an they're owned the by gay. They're, I happen to think there's a gay mafia in hip hop. Right. Fat went on to make a claim that understandably upset many, saying that in the present time, wherever we go, we see the gay community, and they have now taken over the hip hop industry. Joe began to opine that there are so many in numbers that there are no artists left to work with them, whatever that means. I'm know, pretty though? sure. I'm pretty Did sure you, I've done. You, you I've, think I've, you've I've, done songs with gay yeah, rappers? Yeah, I think I've done songs with gay rappers. I'm pretty sure. That. I'm pretty sure of that. He elaborated on the situation saying, I'm pretty sure the football guys are gay, the basketball guys are gay, they're gay. There's millions of gay people in the world, girls too. Cat Williams Cat Williams is a famous American comedian who has been working in the industry for a very long time now. Jamie Foxx, Howard Stern, and Dave Chappelle are just some of the names he has worked with. But when he was working with Jamie Foxx, he noticed something very weird. Mom be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. When he started working with Hollywood, he was invited to many parties. Initially, Kat did not know that these parties would have dark secrets, but his opinion changed when he attended one party. He found out that something else was done there. In these rooms, he said he saw many celebrities, including Jamie Foxx, doing some inappropriate actions in front of his eyes. Who told me backstage at a show and told me I could bring him on stage and air it out? I said, no, nigga, let me wait till I get to LA. <laughs>
But then again, comedian Faison Love has also made a claim about Cat Williams' sexuality, saying the eccentric comedian is acting out to mask the fact that he is a gay man. During a sit-down interview with Tom Joyner, the real husbands of Hollywood star said he feels like Cat is not living his truth. I actually feel sorry for him sometimes, he said. Like I said before, he's not living his true destiny. He's living this fake gangster life. He got this whole persona from a friend of mine named Mac Minister. He's a real pimp who tried to do comedy. Orlando Brown Orlando Brown is one of those people who have openly talked about these dark parties going on since Hollywood came into being. He has always claimed that people in this industry are monsters who can do anything for their own gains, be it financial or physical. He's a gay rapper except for these niggas, except for you and me, Demolish. Uh, I agree with you on that. Excuse you, are you gay? Shit, you know, Okay, well, I'm not. I, I know that. Completely. In his latest interview, he even did some weird mimicry to expose the record execs, and somehow revealed so much about those secret night parties of men. He gave me the Ushkash Kusmash. He gave me the Ushkash Muaf. The Shushmash. They, yeah, they shine. You know what I mean? Beyond that, he also accused the elites of the same thing, that they force artists to get involved in intimate activities, mainly pointing out Diddy. The sex symbol. You know what I'm saying? We looking for some shit. We trying to shake up the world, baby. You know what I'm saying? We trying to do some real shit out here. We all know Diddy has been hosting and organizing all these parties just to make his ties make a more strong position in the industry. Jamie Foxx's viral conspiracy was the one which made the public believe that Diddy is a real giant of this industry. He had shown great courage recently and risen to the forefront of the celebrity news cycle by revealing P. Diddy's notorious Hollywood bashes. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel filming this, and it's a pool party that is ridiculous money. After this, internet users were outraged, and after Jamie ended up in the hospital, suspicions quickly turned to Diddy as the possible perpetrator. However, no evidence supports the claim that Jamie's substance misuse was triggered by Diddy's wild parties. It is clear that Hollywood is not as glamorous as it is seen from the outside. Only people inside know how much sacrifices they have to make, and what they have to go through just to make their position permanent.